Welcome to another episode of Venture Ventures RPG Actual Play D&D show. Uh, I have this written down, but every time I do it, I just end up improvising the intro. Uh, so let's keep doing improv. that. Improv. 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 Um, we are a group of improvisers, writers, LARPers, and all around story lovers who played in a D&D 5e campaign set in a homebrew world of Exoros. I am Jake Friday, the dungeon master for today, and usually every day. So far, it's been every every episode. Um, who knows, though? Anything's possible. Uh, let's go around the table and introduce yourself and your character. Let's start with Brian. Hi, I'm Brian. I play uh, Crispin Crispy Oakenshaft. I am a human... <laughs> I'm from the wild, wild south. Uh, Dave. Hey, guys. I play a character who's a Kenku warlock named Prodding Rod. Proddy for short. Uh, Lex. Hey, guys. I'm Lex. I play the most adorable fighter named Ashwin. And Ryan. Hi, I'm Ryan Omega. I play human warlock Orson Akers. Cool. Richard. Hi, I'm Richard. I play um, Nihilus Nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> what? I his name for a second. He is a Triton Sorcerer. <laughs> Perfect. I got scared. I was like, what? <laughs> um, okay. Perfect. Second cutest character. Um, <laughs> that's debatable. <laughs> uh, last time on Venture Ventures, uh, you guys finally made it to Glodopol, um, and found the person you were looking for in Alu. Unfortunately, your search took a little longer than, uh, maybe you wanted it to, and you ended up finding Alu dead in a cellar, um... And upon closer inspection, you found he was a construct of flesh golem, uh, which a few of you have seen before, and uh, also got affected by a gas spore, uh, a fungal gas spore, which gave you some memories uh, that were not your own, uh, primarily those of 4.chems. And then um, you met Iris who um, claims to be a, another construct, um, this time of a prototype construct of Felix Tricknips. And uh, while you were talking, uh, a fanfare was heard announcing the arrival of a acting troupe, the Strani Acting Company, which comp is comprised of beholders, uh, writing, directing, and acting in their wondrous uh, Elizabethan terrible plays. And you, uh, there you met their opener, which, uh, was the Fire Genasi Girasol, uh, and you guys escaped the play after a giant worm made of crystals and fungal things erupted from beneath the ground and ate one of the beholders, uh, following that, um, there was an incursion by shard mine forces, a lot of uh, intellect devourers, um, crystal trolls uh, were fighting the Strani Acting Company's forces, which are the traditional forces of the Viranol Dominion, which is where you are currently. Um, you made your way in a skill challenge to back to uh, Iris's house. That's where you kind of uh, decompressed. One thing led to another. Hearts were attempted to... People attempted to rip hearts out. Um, it got a little intense. Um, Dave cooled off, thanks to the help of a wall of water from Nihilus. And um, that's where we left off. Iris uh, gave... Had a ring that she didn't have use for. And... Um, Girasol used it to teleport back to her time and place, and there you go. That's where we left off. Uh, so, 
what would you guys like to do? Um, as far as you know, you're hunkered down in these, this skirmish slash battle is still happening on the top side above you. Um, Jirasol just took off. Uh, there's a lot of water. And um, I Prati uh, telepathically talks to Ashwin. He's like, "Hey, uh, I, I noticed that uh, Girasol entrusted you with uh, that piece of the rod of seven parts." Oh, oh, who disappeared? Uh, it's Richard. Um, hey, uh, so I'd like to get my hands on that uh, that rod of seven parts. Um, yeah, can I? I like it, but you're not being a very good bird right now. Ooh. So I think I'm gonna hold on to it until you learned your lesson. You don't even know like what it is. I don't need to know what, what it is. You just started a giant fight for no reason. Why are why are you why are you just listening to Girasol? Because she's a trusted friend of mine. You guys are friends? I didn't know that. Oh man. Just, just give it to me. Just give it to me. I will, just not right now. Caw! And he just says like <laughs> angry con. He harumphs. Caw! Well, that was all in silence because it was messaging. So yeah. Like, oh, well, that's weird. Well, we, <laughs> we need to figure out uh, what what we're doing. I, I don't really want to turn into a gas spore, so that's top of my list. Um, you got I, I, gear solid, cured us all. She cured all of you with restoration. Hey. I did not remember that. <laughs> Woo! But Crispy feel, sure feels better. He remembered. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case, I don't know what we're doing right now. Um, so Iris is visibly shaken from the attempt on her life. Um, and she's keeping her distance. Uh, uh, <laughs> do you do that in game too? <laughs> um, so she doesn't have any food because she does not require it. Uh, I've been kind of lax on, on keeping you guys, um, assuming a lot about food and stuff. So, uh, quick housekeeping thing just remove we'll say three food rations from your inventory for the last oh i don't know few weeks which is stupidly generous on my point part but we'll do and, that uh, if we if we don't have three in our inventory um but, but we'll say we'll just just remove i'm really hungry no um <laughs> I, I won't give you exhaustion or whatnot um, just remove what uh, I have. What you have, and then whatever you don't have, an extra five gold. Got it. And um, so, yeah, Iris uh, says from a good distance away from Prati, especially. Uh, what I know you you want me to forfeit my life, but I'm not, what do you want to do as an alternative right now? Um, in the short term, we can't, I guess we can try to stay down here until what's happening topside blows over, but. No, I, I don't think we should do that. I, I think we should get out of town. I mean, sounds like we have these two, two warren factions and I don't, personally like either of them too much but i got i got personal stake with one of them it sounds like and uh what i kind of want to head that direction what does that mean why what 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 personal what what well i was only sent up here to meet up with you to hopefully just find my way into Virenal dominion i'm you know that four dot kens the one we had the memories for yeah the, uh, uh who i'm chasing down Ooh. What about not, the... Uh, not that I know who the fuck they are, but I'm chasing them <laughs> down one way or another. I, I, I was given that name and Virenal Dominion. What about the the um, the Living Gate and the, and the Dead Gate? 
are we supposed to i feel like everything was so hectic i my memory is shaken but i feel like we're right. supposed to destroy one of those gates so that the well it seems like the, one's trying to open one dread gate the strani acting company wants to open the dread gate and that's gonna expand the planes of dread to the Varanal dominion and then the living gate that's what the shard mine and, and four doc chems wants to do and uh we don't right know what that does other than i say terrible. if it ends with gate it's gotta be a bait that's all i got you broke up there but i filled in <laughs> what you were saying uh, i feel like it was gonna rhyme yep <laughs> uh so so what you know i'll just kind of uh fill in what you've been told the the living gate uh is an attempt to remove someone or something called Father Lymic from his prison um, underneath the eastern mountains and kind of under the frozen jungles. Uh, and, um, yeah, the Dread Gate is trying to, it's exactly what Brian said, it's trying to expand the Dread, the Plains of Dread. And um, you also know that both sides don't particularly like Felix Tricknips. Um, so, you've got plenty of options. Um, what uh, What do we know about uh, Father Lymic? Um, why don't you roll a Arcana check? Anyone who's proficient can roll an Arcana check. I think this is the first character I've ever rolled that's not proficient in Arcana. <laughs> You're proficient in every weapon, aren't you, though? Well, that's kind of nice. That would be an 18. Okay. Yeah, you just... One of those boogie, boogie monsters. Um, horrible beings of... of myth and legend uh, that you're not sure if it's a real thing or uh, if it's just used to scare children and people away from the frozen jungles. Um, and by the way, the frozen jungles, so it goes um, Virenal Dominion, and then going east, it's the frozen jungles along the top side of the continent. And then going further east, it's uh, the Rose Territories, which is, uh, you're familiar with that, Prati. Um, so uh, your options, just some options for you guys, and then I'll, I'll let you talk it out. Um, uh, you can try to help out either side. You can try to gain an audience with them. Uh, and feel free to talk to Iris about this as well. Um, you can try to leave the whole Dominion. Uh, you can uh, further discuss the Dominion with Iris and maybe gain some other... Uh, see what else she knows. and Because um, currently she is the, the closest thing you got to a tour guide in the Dominion. Basically, well, what so, I know is, is I got a target, and I believe Iris, you were the one that told us that they've been uh, kidnapping innocent people as well and doing experiments on them. Somebody told us that. Yeah, I don't uh, really like the sound of that either. They don't seem like good people. Not that the Strani Acting Company is good people. Um, they're all evil. Uh, they're they're you've seen some of their experiments. They're trying to grow heard some of their creatures talk about a garden or just mention growing a garden harvest time such such phrases uh being mentioned in their incursions um yes so they're stealing people and uh the strani acting company is is i guess a little better because they just disintegrate people they don't like and or they Does turn... anyone just want to like go to the Strani Acting Company and just like start start some shit <laughs> with them? Just like let's just go start attacking some uh, act, 
Strani acting company people. Well, I'm proposing like, basically the same thing, but for the other group. <laughs> and their shows are terrible. Oh, that was pretty fucking awful. I'll give you that. Let's do it. Okay. I'm willing to kill people for no reason. And then the whole I'm adventure. I'm telling you, we got we reasons. We, in we the can kill, we we all can put kill our hands with reasons. We go, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> okay. What like what like this? Like this? <laughs> like this? Okay. What? What? Yeah, the... let's go kick some Strani Company ass. Hey! Hey! Let's go kick some Shard Mind ass. That's what I'm saying. Let's, let's go the I'm... other way. All right. I'm telling Leave me you, to the ass, that's and that's I'll the one. The Shard Mind are a little less annoying, but I'm just I just want some action. So far, so far. Mm. We haven't been subject to their plays yet, so, so um, it could be far, far worse. Iris is like real confused by this sudden, like, uh, cheerful exuberance, uh, <laughs> and she's going, "Well, uh, so you want to just go into Dedrinsk up north and go to the f fortress of the Five Tails and just start attacking?" the acting company well we're gonna refine the plan uh <laughs> along the way or you want to <laughs> randomly walk to the south towards the shard mine where you know the shard mine to be emanating from and uh try and attack there <laughs> we're starting we're starting big picture and we're going, just spitballing going down here to the we're just, this is, uh, we're just this is throwing the ideas session. up there. There's no bad ideas right now, okay? This is just... Don't worry your hey. artificial mind about it. So so you heard our two big plans. If we wanted to go south, not just walk south, uh, I believe there was a city, right? Further south? Most of Shar, it's... They raised, That's the one. They raised a, a tower there, which essentially floats in the air, and unless you have flying or a, another... A teleportation circle or something like that to get up there. Um, I have heard of um, some former miners of the crystals in those mountains. Um, I think they're called the purposeless, but they're, they're they uh, no longer work there, and they were uh, they're kind of exiled down to the southwest and they are uh if anyone would know how to get up there it would be them uh but they are in the modeled mirror which is a well there's a rumors of a prison up there of unspeakable containing unspeakable things where Conjuration magic was experimented with, and um, summoning of other planar beings um, for experimentation. I haven't seen it, but that's just what is rumored. So, um, well, that see, would... here you go. You're already providing wonderful information for us to go <laughs> southwest now to find a way into Most Tashar. <laughs> You know where we can find more about this prison without uh, walking right into it? Who runs it? Well, it's kind of like a... Uh, just like... From what I've heard, it's... I don't know who runs it, but it's abandoned because the wizard or necromancer or something... Uh, conjurer did their experiments and left, and so it's just the, the magical runes and such that keep it... Um, that keep it... Ah it up but you know i know you guys don't like either side but both sides can kill us in an instant pretty much there is also the option of beseeching one side or the other and asking for help because they both hate each other so kind of taking advantage of that assholes and do we really want to work with assholes i don't you know you work with us <laughs> That's that's really the question. I don't know how I feel about willingly helping the Strani Acting Company. I know the enemy of my enemy is my friend, or at least that's what they say, but they're dicks and their plays are terrible. 
Here, here. <laughs> and he didn't even get to see their improv show. I know. Oh, God. We, we were blessed that. with that. Yeah. Got that right. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> so Iris at this point goes to this um, kind of uh, crate and pulls it out. And while you guys are talking or discussing this, um, you glance over and you see her kind of removing faces out of this crate. And uh, she puts one of them on. And uh, when she does that, her whole kind of uh, countenance and posture changes and she turns around. She's got a completely different um, face on from the middle-aged uh, kind of typical townsfolk you might pass through uh, or might see in a t uh, town you pass through. Uh, she's gone from that to kind of a serious and scary, uh, sinister looking. Basically, it almost looks like she's just looks at you and she's trying to intimidate you type of look. Um, and Nihilus uh, turns to Prodi and says, I'm sorry we didn't kill her. <laughs> that me was too. Gross. Me too. I <laughs> don't consider her a living thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, She's basically just, instead of keeping her distance now, she walks straight up to you guys and kind of listens into your, uh, your discussion about what to do. Uh, so. Oh, boy. Last night was, or was, uh, recently it was crazy, right, Nihilus? Ugh. Oh, sorry. I didn't see you there, uh, Iris. And she's, like, staring at you when she looks at you just like that. Um, and uh, she goes... Sure, bird. Sure. That's their word, Iris. It's my Not word really. now once they try to rip my heart out. I call him bird all the time, too. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Felix uh, Tripnip programmed you to appropriate, huh? <sighs> she doesn't say anything. Well, we should focus on getting out of this basement, but if you don't mind, I, I'd like to, can we, do you think we can stay down here for another hour or so? Maybe rest up before... Sneaking out of town. I mean, you guys could even do a long rest if you wanted. Um, it's up to you guys. Uh, yeah, let's do a long rest. That way we could just heal everything up. Fine by I'm, me. You can get some sleep. I'm good for that. Okay. We're let's good. do it. All right. Yay. And. Okay, everything's fine. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> the 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 uneventful night passes and um Iris stays in her corner. You guys uh I guess take her bed? What would you how where, where would you I was about to say there doesn't seem to be a bed for all of us, so I guess we just uh, There's zip a... all our bed rolls together. <laughs> Does that work for everyone? Mm-hmm. Sounds good. There, there we go. Nihilus, you use your That's tub. Fine. No, I'm not going to use my tub. I'm just going to cuddle with okay. everyone. Um, next morning, uh, there's a lot less of the muffled sounds of um, yelling and whatnot coming from uh, upstairs, uh, the ground floor, essentially. And Iris is fully awake and... Um, repeats that she has no food for you guys so however you're gonna make food uh or or eat your rations what would you like to do on that end as we scurry out of town i'm gonna be keeping my eye out for some abandoned food stalls <laughs> that i sneak some rolls off of okay um and uh you're just gonna run in a random direction out of town or what well i've I was going to ask uh, Iris. She's familiar with the town. What what part of town are we in? Um, you're in the southern part of of uh, Glodopole. Uh, Perfect. And we Glodop want to go southwest. <laughs> okay. So she says to you, well, we can head back on the road west, which is the same road you came in on, and then cut south at some point through the forest. 
I do warn you though that you know these forests are can be dangerous at times so um, keep your wits about you and um, yeah is that everyone in agreement anyone want to talk further about things or Hands in, everybody. Yeah, sounds do good. Do want to do this again? <laughs> Another hands in. Okay. <laughs> Prady, uh, Prady just that. digs around on the ground, Ooh. finds some worms. Man. Ew. Ew. Has he ever done that? No, not with <laughs> us. <laughs> I've always had plenty of food with me, but I don't anymore. I just eat one of my rations. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, okay, so. Iris leads the way um, topside, and she opens up the cellar door and uh, looks out, and the town, as you guys go topside, is back to how it was when you first entered. It's no longer the the um, beautiful town that it turned into uh, when the Shrani Acting Company arrived, and... Um, People are kind of finished. Some people are looting th things and trying to collect the dead things around from this incursion. Um, and you don't see any... All of your per passive perceptions aren't... Can I uh, look around to see if there's anything worth sure. pillaging? Uh, investigation check... I'd be looking around for food. Investigation check. 16. I got an 8. Uh, nope, Nihilus. Uh, and then, um, Brian, you find... Excuse me, Crispy. You find, um, like, a fruit stand that somehow was not very damaged in all the fighting. It was abandoned and hasn't been reclaimed. Um, obviously there's some fruit that fell off the stand, but there's a lot of it still on the stand. Um, it's not the best fruit. It's similar mm -hmm. to the other food you found in the Dominion in terms of being very, everything's just drab. So the colors on this fruit is, uh, just not the best. Um, but yeah. nevertheless, it feeds you. It's edible. Yeah. I shove a, a few extra ones in my bag. Okay. And um, Iris says, well, I guess we waited the appropriate amount of time. Let's get going before another incursion happens. Um, she leads you west, and this is the same, the same uh, way you came in. And um, is there anything you'd like to... Do you want to keep an eye out for um, anything... That you've previously... I wanna... Go ahead. I want to keep an eye out for when we were first in here and running through the town. Didn't we? Didn't we get like kind of chased by guards and many beholders? Right. Everything's. Um, there's a lot. You've already seen a lot of those guards and many beholders. Uh, gotcha. Dead on the ground. Um, people are still hiding out in their homes. So it's almost like kind of the the space in between, right after. A battle has um, finished and uh, the cleanup has begun, so uh, people are still kind of afraid to start the cleanup process. There are a few people who are um, digging around. Um, I'm yeah. checking guards' pockets as we walk by. They don't need it anymore. Okay, investigation check. <laughs> oh, that's shitty. Five. <laughs> I mean, it's like coppers. Mm. You can add, um, you know, worms. Twenty-five copper to your, to your bag. I, I will. Um, if anyone else would like to look through pockets, you can. Otherwise, yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to look through pockets. Specifically, like to find a, a map. Any maps? I rolled a ten for investigation. You have a map mimic, which uh, you know that based on where you go. Um, it doesn't give you, because it's of the whole continent, you can't see real specific things in the Viranol Dominion, but uh, you may try and look at your map mimic 
maybe uh i would yeah i'd like to look at my map mimic okay so you pull out your map mimic and it is pretty darn hungry and bitey uh <laughs> it is biting at you and you're kind of like oh can oh. i can i use my can i use my uh roll just for to find fruit or I mean, yeah again? you don't need to you can just wherever um crispy got some uh okay the mimic i don't know if you previously named your, your map mimic uh but no. the mimic uh eats it's pretty ravenous so it eats the fruit but it's not its favorite thing um, it likes meat. Exactly. You all have the weirdest crap in your bag. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? It's mappy. There you go. Yeah, this is my map mimic that was just named mappy. Uh, our? Our map, map mimic. mimic. Sorry. Thank you very much. <laughs> but I hold what? on for safekeeping. That's yeah. weird. <laughs> um... It's going to give us some valuable information, so... Oh, yeah, by all means. Hope it's more useful than the flying head. <laughs> uh, and... You mean the one in my bag? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the one we are still carrying around in a bag. <laughs> it will be useful one day, I swear to you! <laughs> um, I'm holding my breath. Orson and Ashwin and... Nihilus and Prodi, that head, obviously it's undead and not Max Morning Brow, but it, because it's a, f a flying head, it reminds you a lot of Max. And in the past, I think it was Aradia who asked Max where he's from and how he came to be, and he said he didn't know. So um, just some further uh, reminders there. Um, so... Uh, and, and Dave, you probably don't share what the map mimic, map mimic does for you also with the, the, uh, the rods, um, or do you share that with them showing you where they are and stuff? Guys, um, yeah, there's something I haven't told you about the map mimic. Oh, it actually tells me where the other six parts of the, the rod of seven parts are it shows you one at a time and this this is why he came up here one of the reasons um it shows you where the next one is so yeah so just letting that's you guys interesting know interesting information to keep from us so that's yeah. interesting like so as long as ashwin's carrying that one it's going to keep telling it and telling you that it's right next to you <laughs> well i don't know it could be pointing me to the one inside miss uh the most human person in the world iris uh, still same thing that's kind of funny <laughs> <laughs> ashwin do you yeah oh, why do you need these again because it's a really powerful uh artifact and we might need it to to dispatch a much powerful much more powerful being at some point okay well, reasonable. Le you still gotta learn your lesson about life first. Wow. So I'm working on it. I'm working uh, on myself. <laughs> Self care. Feel free to insight check if you want, Ashwin. But if you want to trust him, you can as well. Ooh. Uh, I'll trust him for now. Okay. Um. So getting out of town is not too difficult. Uh, all of your, looking at your deck scores, all of you are quite good in that area. Um, and that'll be enough because, like I said, it's a pretty, it's ghost town, uh, after the fight. Making your way out, um, on the road, you, uh, go past the old corpse flower, that you dispatched it is in a rotting state smells horrible uh not so, that it smelled good to begin with no 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 but it's yeah it's just <laughs> as bad at least if not if not worse um and you see your old pal velov half digested velov uh still uh rotting um and iris about halfway through the day says Now's as good a time as ever to 
I guess, start making our way south. I don't like going in these woods, but um, I guess this is what we're doing. So uh, There's not a road. It's through the woods. Let's head in. Make sure you stay close together. There are things in the woods that like to snatch and grab if mm. you know what I'm saying. So mm. um, That was my nickname in college. <laughs> Pardon me, Ashwin? <laughs> Say again? What? Uh, you're being too vague. You need to clarify. <laughs> That's good. I did not know what snatch and grab means in this particular context. <laughs> I can snatch and grab. Uh, <laughs> Iris um, just, just keeps going. Um, she's. Le Do you want? What's the marching order through the forest? Yeah, she. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mind going up front, and I'll just sling my whip over my neck, and that'll uh, that'll let us know if anything's coming. Okay. Um, just carrying it right around my neck. Who's behind Crispy? I'll be behind Crispy. Crispy Ash. Want to hop on my shoulder? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who's after them? I'll go after them. So Iris is in front? No, Iris wants Crispy oh, volunteers front. and confidently volunteers. Uh, she says she'll protect uh, anything from sneaking up on you guys. She doesn't really understand the uh, whip uh, mechanics. So she'll go last. So who's next after Ash and Crispy? I guess I'll go so that Prodi can... Uh... Oh, oh yeah, yeah. It's uh, Orson. And then Nihilus. And then Prodi. And then Prodi, so he can keep an eye on Iris. <laughs> She's much more... I want to yeah, go... see this unfold. Uh, <laughs> Prodi, there's a little bit of intimidation going on. She's much more intimidating now. Her stature's very, uh, soldier-like, and, um, you haven't seen her to, you know, in battle, so, uh, but now she's definitely looks a bit more limber. Um, <laughs> is that the wrong... I like the way you put that. Wink. Sure. Uh, <laughs> you can infer whatever you like from that. Uh, so going through... Oh, let me roll for this. Okay. Okay. Well, I hate when the dice just, like, wobble and roll everywhere. This is why I don't like rounded edges. Um, you got to use your new dice tossing method. Oh, no. that's even worse. <laughs> You just shake your hand. Nobody is amused by that. No. <laughs> I am immensely. <laughs> Correction, Richard. One person. An uh, iris. She likes it, but she's not real, so. <laughs> she couldn't see she it, so. Um, okay. One second while I look this up. If you haven't been able to tell uh nihilus is beginning to turn on <laughs> iris on his opinion of her do you guys no. <laughs> what do you guys so you're going through this forest and there's um it's very a, a low ceiling at some points and um there's not really much of a benefit to uh, any breaks in the canopy because it's just more dark clouds and foreboding uh, light. Um, are you guys just quiet the whole time? Or are you talking? Um, what's going on? Well, Ashwin's riding on my shoulder. I go ahead and ask. Now, Ashwin, I, I never met a mouse that could talk, as I mentioned before. Where Where are you from? So they, we don't have your, your mice like you. Uh, where I'm from, down by East Mall. Oh, I'm from a forest, you know, a big one, kind of like a, this. A big forest, you don't say. That's not not any particular forest, just a big one. Eh, I don't like talking about it much. That's fair. I understand it's that. I was just full of stupid rules there. 
Ah. Yeah, well, rules are what society is built on and all that. <laughs> um, okay, so... Well, you know, it's just like... <laughs> we'd be very secretive, and we didn't go out in the world a lot before until, like, this thing happened. So now I'm out here trying to get information. But mm. I don't go back. It's fun out here. Um, Fun's one way to look at it, I suppose. Nihilus calls out because he's, you know, nosy and is listening. Um, and he says, I can relate to that. My people also, they mm-mm, they don't like the outside world. They like to stay under the sea. Under the sea. Thank you. I was about to do, I was about to. <laughs> <laughs> under the sea. Uh, why, why would they stay under the sea? Oh, they because we're better than the land dwellers, um, and they Whoa. don't really like to help, uh, and they don't like to be a part of the politics of people on land, and so it's gonna backfire mm-hmm. for them one day, I bet. It might, but you know what? It's one of the reasons why I I decided to come on this adventure because uh, you know things needed to be shaken up for me a little bit. You do like to shake things up. I give you that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and we continue on okay marching our way southwards um yeah please i've stated this before but if you guys ever want to ask people questions uh don't don't uh, be shy about interrupting me uh at all um so a little probably an hour into your trek through the forest um you see various patches of spider webs hanging from the canopy strung over the canopy um, there's not really much you can see. I'm just going on your passives, uh, your passive perceptions and such. Uh, cause the only person who's real good is crispy. Ashwin's not bad. Um, but then in the distance is, uh, this, the slope of the forest starts kind of gently going upwards, inclining, uh, Pretty, pretty far away, because it's so brightly colored, you see two large, kind of eight-foot-tall snail shells. Um, and uh, their shell is iridescent. Um, the, the, the low light in the forest and in the Viranal Dominion uh, altogether, it still manages to refract and reflect beautiful um, colors off their shells and since you guys are kind of behind them you can kind of tell above portions of their shell you see these red kind of spiky tentacles um, further on Uh, you know they're probably about eight feet tall and um, you're not sure how how long they are, uh, any other dimensions, because you guys are a couple hundred feet away, so. Well, those are something beautiful. I want to get a closer look. Anybody else want to sneak up with me and see if we can see what those things are? Because those, that's, this is a drab place, and those are something <laughs> gorgeous. Nihilus, are you related to these? They look like sea things. Uh, do they, to me? look like sea things i mean there's snails on on the land as well as the ocean so uh they but do, would would we have them as large as these yeah and portions of the sea not look not of that um if you want to see if you have seen things like that such colorful uh a- appearance you can roll for um, or you can just decide, um, but okay, it's they're rare things okay. like. Um, I'll say, uh, no, um, okay, so I'm not like blood related to snails, <laughs> but we do like to uh, ride on the snails in uh, near our village, and you know, push them around and stuff. They get all scared. They hide in their little shells, and then we like throw them around back and forth. That's really fun, but they're not you go, this. Big. You go snail tipping. Snail tipping? <laughs> no. Are you talking about? Uh, yes. No, it's kind of like we we grab them and then roll them 
Oh, that sounds a lot more fun. You can't do that with cows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you can you roll these? Can you can you snail tip these? These one we might be a little too big. I don't know. I kind of want to try. We can try it. Okay. <laughs> Let's go try to tip tip and roll right, these, right. these snails. Ever, everyone be quiet now. Let's, <laughs> let's go quiet. Let's, so, let's see if we can get up behind them closer and see what we're dealing with here. Ashwin and uh, Crispy are going to kind of scope it out. I'll right. sneak behind them as well. All right. All, all of those who are going roll stealth check. I'll go because I want to tip and roll some snails. <laughs> 18 for me. 19. 15. I'm going to stumble through that forest. I rolled a three. Uh, was it a natural? Like, what was the natural roll? Two. Oh, okay. Um, it, what, we'll say um, average-wise, uh, since it wasn't a natural one, then I would definitely say you, you give everyone up. But uh, average-wise, it's not too bad. Um, so what you, you, you start sneaking up, and as you're getting closer, you start to find a um, like a thin layer on the forest floor of uh, almost transparent, um, hardened... Uh, goo residue from the snail. Kind of, it's it's residue is what it is, but um, kind of the the pine needles and uh, detritus on the forest floor is suspended in this goo. Um, and um, yeah, I uh, Nihilus wants to like put his hands in the goo, and then he's gonna go behind <laughs> Ashwin and go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you so I assume you're gonna want to do it sneakily. Um, uh huh. So make another stealth check. <laughs> okay, we'll see if this one's better. I got a ten. Okay. Um, Ashwin, let me look at your passive again. Oh yeah. Uh, so Ashwin, you're still on Orson's shoulder, I believe, right? Yes. Crispies. Crispies, uh, sorry. Um, That's why our stealth rolls were so close together. Sure. Um, uh, you totally, you look back and you see uh, Nihilus <laughs> kind of pushing his hands in there. And he's and he looks kind of like, uh, like he's about to play a prank. Um, um, so yeah, what do you do? You totally see him coming. Um... um... Okay, so I think I want to do, like, a backflip off of Crispy's shoulder and land next to him and be like, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> so I guess if I miss her, then I'm going to... Um, did you do it to, like, avoid me, or did you do it prior to me sneaking up? I think, because the way it was said, I see you put your hand in the goo. Mm -hmm. so you're, like, walking towards us, so I just flip, like, I guess behind you. Okay, so no. I didn't like just miss you. You saw it coming, and I'm nowhere near you. Yeah. Okay. And I'm gonna say, oh, nothing, just you know. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, look, cool, right? Um. <laughs> Something very confused. Just, look how sticky it is. So uh, everyone make a survival or nature check. Survival and nature if you're proficient. Just if you're proficient? Uh, either one, uh, but you have to be proficient in either one. Gotcha. Okay. Ooh. I got a nat 20. I'm not rolling well today. I rolled a natural one. <laughs> Whoa. It's just like sticky fun goo. Uh, uh -huh. that's, that's all it is. You, Nihilus. Ashwin, um... Uh, 25. Yeah, you're, um... You know exactly what this goo is sometimes used for. Uh, maybe there's someone in your village back home that would collect it from these snails. Um, but when it solidifies fully, uh, it can be used as a kind of stained glass. Um, it can be a, a substitute for glass. Um, because it hardens in the same uh, fashion. 
uh, but it just has this colorful uh, iridescence to it, so it's not completely transparent. Um, yeah. Uh, should I be concerned that it's on his hands then? I mean, it's it'll just make like it won't. It's not going to harden unless he keeps his hands, um, you know, completely in one position, which it's just assumed. Oh he, yeah, no, I would. Won't. I would wipe it off after yeah. my failed attempt. Yeah, and even if he was moving his hands, it would just harden in some places, and when he'd move it, it would it would flake off. Um, yeah, so that's what you know about this snail residue. And as you guys are, you know, getting closer to this these uh, snails, there's two of them, uh, and they don't seem to pay you much mind. You're probably within uh, 60 feet, and the the or, ornate ornate's not the right word. Um, the spectrum of colors that these shells give off is is just absolutely gorgeous the rest of the body uh other than the tentacles with the spike tentacles that it has it has five of them uh those are red but the rest of the body is very snail like it's a kind of a brownish orangish um color uh and um yeah you guys are uh 60 feet behind it now um, it's not paying you much attention. Um, what would you like to do? Um, I, I've seen what I wanted to see. I just want to get a closer look at these pretty things, but uh, I don't see much use in it, antagonizing them. Uh, they're really big now that we're closer. That's uh, bigger than I was expecting, and those uh, spiky heads don't look too nice. <laughs> I mean, I guess I could try. <laughs> we could try riding them. They're real slow, it seems. Does it seem like they're slow? They're, they're, they're snail slow. Dying. <laughs> well, this was a bust. Well, I'll go ahead and give it a whirl. Um, so this is what I would like to do. I would like to run out um, with my awesome movement speed um try to shove one okay and then uh step of the wind and run away real fast that's step of the wind is disengage right um in this case i will be using it to dash okay so you're not going to disengage. disengage oh no uh, you no, have the i have to pick one or the yeah. other so i'm going to pick to dash and run away okay um that's what i would like to do uh, so as you... I'm going to try to tip it. Fair enough. Uh, as you're getting closer, you notice them start to slow down um, and kind of rotate uh, opposite directions very slowly. So, I mean, you're you're freaking <laughs> a, a monk, so... My speed is 55 feet. Right, and these are snails. <laughs> so uh, just everything's in slow motion compared to you, uh, make a, are you just going to go for it? You're probably not. Are you even going to stealth or just like, no, I'm just sprinting at them. Right. Them okay. Sprinting away. Fair enough. Um, make a strength, uh, check. Well. So <laughs> I'm, I'm a very lean muscle. <laughs> That is a nat one for a zero. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you see, this is what happens. You see, uh, those of you, I think Prodi and Iris were the only ones who stayed back, uh, but you can still see this. And the rest of you see Orson sprint, like you've seen him do before, Crispin. super fast. Crispin. Crispy, sorry. Uh, super and I shout, yee-haw, as I do it. <laughs> okay, sure. Of course he do. Um, of course I do. So he's taken off, and he gets close to these snails, and he reaches out, and he ends up just, like, hitting, just re running into these things, and kind of falling to one knee before trying to take off. Um, and the snails are still turning. They don't really get phased by it. Now that you're seeing the sides of them, um, now that you're seeing the sides of them, they're longer... Uh, no, we'll say they're eight feet tall and eight feet long. Um, 
but they are definitely making their way towards you as Crispy gets away. Um, everyone, roll initiative. Oh. So I have a question. I haven't been, uh, I haven't really been involved in this. So <laughs> where's Prati? Uh, well, it's up to you. You can like they would have gone ahead, and you can you could have stopped. Yeah, I'm, you could have. I mean, am I just back by myself with Iris? I, <laughs> it's up to you. Sure. It's up to you. Well, Here if it's we up to me, then I am alone with Iris. That's correct. Okay. <laughs> So before you guys roll initiative, <laughs> Dave, what do you want to do? Um, <laughs> I would like to cast polymorph on her and turn her into a cockroach. <laughs> okay. Um, she has immutable form because she's a construct. So when you do that, mark that oh. spell off. Nothing happens. God damn um, it. And now she looks. She at you. truly is not alive. I can't <laughs> cast polymorph on her. Uh, Dave, uh, she's using, she has a, a staff on, she was using the staff before she changed her face a lot to walk around, um, and she would grasp that, but once she changed her face, um, she had that strapped to her back, and, um, when you turn around and she sees your countenance, uh, and you cast a spell, uh, do you say anything to her, or do you just, like... Or what? What? I'm just like, oh, can you believe these ding dong <laughs> tipping over these snails? Like, get a life. Make a deception check. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> uh, deception. Uh, seven. Uh, okay. Um, she got an eighteen on insight. <laughs> Um, oh boy, Iris, you're very intuitive for <laughs> for a robot. Oh my god! So she grabs her staff and snaps it. She twists it. It looks like a normal stick, but she twists it, and out from the middle come these two blades. These they form. She's got two ikawas. Uh, which is a terrible word. I don't like saying it, but they're Ikawas. Um, so it's basically a stick, and then there's two very sharp, long, thin blades out of the ends of them. And um, she is going to give you a slash, uh, and depending on what you do after that, will uh, roll initiative or not. Um, or unless what you do want... I do after that? Yeah, so like if you... If, if you're planning... Regardless of whether she hits or not, she's going to swing. If you're planning on continuing the fight with her, um, then we'll roll initiative. Or if you want to try to de-escalate, we'll... Yeah, I'm going to try to de-escalate. Okay, she's still going to... Um... It's an unnatural 20. Oh. Okay. Again, an unnatural 20. So the first strike, um, she slashes at you, and it's only eight slashing damage, um, but it's preternatural speed. Um, you don't even realize, she, like, the pain isn't there. These blades are extremely sharp. The pain comes a little bit later. Um, her two slashes are so fast, you your bug eyes, <laughs> your bug eyes don't even register it. Um, the second All slash, of a sudden I'm itchy. Yeah, mm -hmm. it kind of actually, yeah, sh sort of. Um, so that uh, first one was eight damage, and then the next one was fourteen slashing damage. Uh, and she looks at you like this is not gonna go your way um well, how do you de-escalate take that damage and then how do you de-escalate oh oh boy oh man uh, i don't know what to say i uh still really need that that thing that's inside <laughs> of you. Um, uh, double down oh man i you know what peace for right now <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll catch you later. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. Felix Tripnip sure broke the mold when he built you, baby. <laughs> so it's. <laughs> so, so it's uh, just to remind you, it's trick nips, like trick nips, like a trick nipple. Um, trick nips, like trick nips. <laughs> like what was I? What was I saying? You, know, you were like saying trick nips. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's a common thing. Um, you, no, you were saying trip as in T R I P. Uh. uh yeah, which These is harder to say. I misspoke though, because yeah. I, I I knew it was trick nip, but I guess okay. I just misspoke. Okay. Um, so she looks at you and says, "I promise you, I'll have your heart before you have mine." Wow. Um, so romantic. So, <laughs> Dave, um, make a persuasion check. Okay. These have not gone very well for me. Do you and and check your inventory? I'm not sure if you do, uh, but I want to remind you for your benefit if you to check your inventory in case you have anything in there that may assist with persuasion, maybe or any ability check. Um, I mean, I could I can cast something on myself that gives me a better saving throw thing. It's I can cast resistance. Um, but saving throw is not an ability check. Oh. Um, let's see. Equipment. <sighs> Got any powerful magic items that might be replacements for her heart? <laughs> Just, you know, <laughs> hanging out in your bag? Uh, why didn't I think of that? Uh, <laughs> No, I mean I have stuff that can cure, but I don't. Okay. Yeah, I don't have any items that can that can help with this. What'd you think. roll on your persuasion check? Ten. Um. So, um. I think, uh, and you're so you're basically not taking a aggressive posture or anything you're just trying okay no yeah after polymorph didn't work i was like hey nothing nothing going on here and you're bleeding profusely uh so she's gonna leave you alone uh <laughs> your feathers have this beautiful crimson color now um and she's she's gonna say to you stay in front of me if i see you do that again you'll be dead before you can finish uttering those spell component or those spell uh, verbal components, she says it better than I just did. <laughs> because I'm not an assassin, uh, I just play one in D and D. Yeah, so she says, "Keep walking." Cut back to initiative uh, up there. What did everyone roll in their initiatives? Oh, Twenty-one. Ooh, 20. 15. 7. It's like the highest I've ever rolled for initiative. Okay. Um, let me roll for these slow pokes. <laughs> Having advantage on initiative is neat. <laughs> the snails, I... as you can imagine aren't dexterous and they rolled two twos and they have a minus three modifier uh awesome. so they just disappear from ex no i'm just kidding um they're at the <laughs> bottom of the order uh okay so and then dave and iris you guys if you guys catch up and want to engage you can um and we'll have you I do not want to engage. I'm not feeling up to it. Okay. <laughs> um, she will definitely... Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, got that, got that, got that. All right. Um, 
Iris will engage once you guys make your way up there. So uh, depending on where you go, Dave, that's where Iris will go because she's going to make sure she has an eye on you. Um, all right. So these things are turning around on you, and uh, it is Crispy's turn. So where did I end up after my hilarious attempt to... Well, how how many you dashed away, and what was your movement? Yeah, so did I get to do all of that? No, it would be halved because you fell to the ground, so uh, gotcha. unless there's so some good. monk ability yeah. that... Um... Um, actually, I'm mobile, so it only takes five feet of movement to stand up. So minus the five. So, I'm, then... so I'm still 50 feet back, so I'm 10 feet from where my group was, basically. Sure. Yep. Um, all right, I'm going to whip out my longbow, get ready to shoot and hold my action uh, in case they do something aggressive. Like shoot I beams at us or something. I'm just I'm very sensitive after the I beams, um, though I'm 50 feet away, and I just uh, say to the group like I'm just waiting to see if they do something. Okay. Uh... And I'm I'm prepared. Ten says shots. Okay. So they'll be stronger. Um. So it's just when they attack, that's when it'll trigger. Uh yeah. If if they take aggressive action towards us. Okay, uh, Nihilus, what would you like to do? They're making uh, their way towards you guys. Um. Uh, okay, I am going to go ahead and cast um, Ray of Frost mm -hmm. at them. And I don't think I need to roll anything. Yeah, I don't need to roll anything. It's a save then? Uh... Yes. Uh, oh, no, no. I do have to do a ranged spell attack. Okay. Okay. Where, where is my... There it is. Um, That is a 15. Does not hit. Your shot what? goes wide. These things are slow but heavily armored. It deflects off of their iridescent shell. And I'm going to need... Um, roll a d6 for me. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I got a six. Oh, man. Um, okay. So when you shoot this uh, arcane frost at it, it hits the shell and kind of uh, shatters... Uh, and sprays the magic that you are used to seeing, um, the color of which I assume is ice-colored, uh, unless you want it to be something else. Um, mm -hmm. It shoots off uh, in all directions for about 30 feet, um, and you get the idea that uh, if you or if someone or something would have been within that range, uh, they would have might have gotten hurt um, by the deflection of your spell. Usually when your spell misses or gets deflected by, say, inanimate objects, it usually doesn't do things like that. So it's definitely a something you're not used to seeing uh, in terms of uh, deflections. So anything else? Um, yeah, so that was only when I hit the shell, right? Yep. Okay, so I'm I'm coming for you, snail. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, as a bonus action, cast a shield of faith on myself. And that's a uh, casting as a bonus action for that. Yep. Okay. Cool. Uh, and that gives you AC bonus, I believe. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. What does it look like? Good call, Brian. Ooh. Uh, I'm gonna make it look like uh like a fat. Starfish. Yeah. Nice. Just like fat ass leg starfish. What color? Uh, coral. Pretty. Yeah, uh, I would think so. <laughs> um, anything else? Or is that your turn? Uh, no, that's it. Orson. All right. So Orson uses invocation speak with animals. Okay. To talk oh. to the snails and ask them, 
Hey, where were you going before someone tried to tip ya? <laughs> What's the um what does the spell say about intelligence? Real quick. Um oh, okay. Let me check. Bring it up right here. I am speak with animals. Um you gain the ability to comprehend and verbally communicate with with beasts for the duration. Duration is ten minutes. The knowledge and awareness of many beasts is limited by their intelligence, but at minimum, beasts can give you information about nearby locations and monsters, including whatever they can perceive. Uh, perceived within the past day, that you might be able to persuade a beast to perform a small favor for you at the GM's discretion. That doesn't say anything about intelligence. Um, it says it's based. It, it it's going to be a little bit yeah, limited by the intelligence. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. It's a snail, so um, you can imagine how intelligent it is, but it basically gives you the feeling, not in any words, uh, that it was just feeding. Oh, okay. So... That's that's what it's... Um, what it was doing. It was feeding. It was feeding, okay. Um, so then I kind of... Uh, would I be able to do another action based off that, or is my speaking with animals my action? Is that an action to cast? Like, is it? Is, uh, actually, yes. It's a um, time is one action, and okay. it is, but it is at will. So I guess that's my action. Yep. And do you you have a bonus action? Uh, uh, let me see. Let me put my bonus actions. I'm nothing that applies right now. Okay. All right. Ashwin. Uh, hey guys, do we have to fight it? It doesn't seem like it's gonna do anything. Charge! <laughs> okay. <yeah. laughs> um, you see me? I'm just waiting. Yeah. So I'm gonna take out um the flame tongue scimitar that Jersel gave me. Holy moly! Now I'm going to uh, speak the magic words to make the fire go off. What are the magic words? It's barbecue time. <laughs> that, all right. So, so Girasol named it. Or, okay. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> it lights up oh. like uh, a beautiful beacon in the dark, dark dank forest yes um i think i'm just gonna hold from there just i just turned it on okay um okay it is their turn they're gonna dash to you guys which is not good but they're gonna get to within 20 feet of you guys and yes it looks like uh they are g being aggressive and now that they're closer these flails are very long uh, mm. and I'm um, letting, letting, letting loose. <laughs> all right, do it. So two at the closest one, I guess. Sure. Snail A. Uh, so that's a mod twenty and a mod fourteen. Okay. Um, the first one hits. <coughs> and that does wow! Terrible, terrible roll. Seven points of damage, piercing. All right. Piercing magical damage. Piercing magical. Okay. Uh, that was your trigger. Now it's uh, we're back to the top, and I need to check with Prodi. Would you have gotten like caught up to your compatriots or? Yeah, I've caught up. I've caught up at this point, and um, just kind of, I don't know. Can I even get involved if I'm, I haven't rolled initiative? Like, could I heal wounds on somebody if I wanted to? Uh, you would need that. You need to roll initiative, and then I would put you in the initiative order. Nah, yeah. you, you don't have I'm to ever of, attack. <laughs> I'm watching from afar. Okay. But, um, I don't know. Okay. Fifty feet away. All right. Um, Iris. Okay. Uh, she's gonna get involved. Yeah. Um, but she's not gonna get closer. She's gonna stay the fifty. And let me see. Nope. 
Yep. I will describe what happens in one second. Uh, that is two plus seven, nine. So Iris, uh, Dave, um, your closest, uh, you see her, um, she was wearing those satin gloves before that go up to her elbows, uh, and you see in one quick motion, her arms go back, and then out of her wrist area, um, seemingly unaffected by her, the gloves that you see, uh, she reaches down and just flings these two daggers through the air extremely fast, one of which um, clanks off of the shell of the left one and blinks out of existence and is back in her, her uh, hand, in her grasp. Uh, and then the second one um, makes contact, and the snail doesn't make any... Uh, noise per se, but you see it's affected by this blade, and then it also doesn't stay there. It blinks back into her grasp. Um, and that's her turn, because she wants to stay next to you. <laughs> Crispy, it is your turn again. Um, so I go, big cows, anger cows, and uh, all of a sudden I'm standing next to Prati and, and Iris. Because <laughs> I ran away! Okay. Um... <laughs> Not gonna... um, but I'm, say I'm saying as I'm running away, like, no reason to be here. Let's go, guys. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, all right. So, Nihilus. I guess I'll also run away because <laughs> if Crispin, our, like, toughest guy, <laughs> is not going <laughs> to fight, then I'm definitely not going to fight. Okay. Uh, Orson. Um, I'm also... Um, grabbing some distance at this point because I have no incentive to do so. Okay. To fight. Ashwin? Aw, I just turned the board on, guys! <laughs> you made a compelling argument! <laughs> We're fine! So I sheath the sword, which turns off the flames, and I run away. Um, Let the cowards be all over. So... It's obvious to all of you that, or it's logical, that there may be uses for these creatures, shells and such, but you don't know what it is other than Ashwin. Ashwin, you probably, uh, you definitely know about the uh, residue that they leave, um, but the shells you know for sure can be used for stuff, um, whether you care or just want to continue your action is up to you um how, how big yeah, are the shells i care how do i okay recall this information um no i'm just gonna say based on your previous uh role when you were examining the residue it was just about the snails in general um so you have that information that you know that the shells can be made into things they have some sort of property uh, of which you've seen already uh, when Nihilus shot them with the spell. Um, let me read real quick. You can um, tell them if you want, but uh, you don't have to as well. So, hey, guys, if you want to, like, stick around and maybe fight the thing, these shells are very useful for stuff. Oh, you can see how they're pretty good at defending most of our our attacks. Well, I'm I'm just a little worried. They look a little big. How big are the shells? The shells are the, sh the shells themselves. Yeah, the shells are probably um, four feet in diameter, and then um, the traditional shell shape. Uh, kind of... Yeah. My worry is it's awful big. I don't know how we're going to cart that around, really. Fair point. I don't, even think that, I don't even think I can smash that in my bag. We can also maybe get the uh, the snail goo, if you like. It kind of, it's a good property for glass. Why you shouldn't have it on your hands, because it'll harden. I mean, if you if you want us to, to go ahead and kill these things, I, I want to see how successful you are at this 
time around. <laughs> I mean, it's not inherently important, but like maybe yeah, here. it could be very useful. <laughs> oh, um, boy. <laughs> Well, I also know just from talking to them that they're just feeding and not doing anything else. So if someone happens to have maybe a poison that they could put into something that they're feeding on, maybe we don't have to fight so difficulty or so hard. Ooh, that's smart. Which one of you has a poison? Afraid I don't. Uh, I don't think I have anything that can poison well, I do have some random things that I got. There, I have a couple of potions that I just don't know what they do, but I don't want to accidentally get them overpowered. I do punk type thing, and I pull out one of the uh, one of the um, bottles that I got from the before. carnival. Yeah. Can I can I check that? Check which. The, the thing, I forgot that I have a proficiency in, like, I have, like, alchemy tools. Oh. Hmm. Um, what do you want to, you, so, you want to retcon, like, checking what they are? Is that it? Yeah. So, like, at some point in the past, you're wanting to. Or if to... you can do it now, I'll be like, oh, yeah, I forgot. I mean, it, it takes time to check this, uh, oh. this type of thing. Like, you can't, um, you can, it, you won't know for sure is what I'm saying, uh, if you're just taking a look at it, um, especially since they're the bottled uh, punks is what they're called. Um, mm -hmm. Humanoidish, small, tiny bottled uh, things. Um, so if you want to make a uh, intelligence check with your proficiency added to it. Uh, sure, go ahead. I don't think I have a proficiency in that. So. No, you. If you have the tools, and I'm pretty sure you have. Uh, yeah, if prof you're proficient in alchemy supplies, then that's what he's saying. Yeah, that's what ah. you're getting the proficiency bonus for. So then, what is the bonus? Your proficiency. Plus three. Yeah. Plus what? Three. Okay. Is our proficiency. So I rolled a sixteen. All right. So what's your int? Oh, that's what? what you rolled. Never mind. Sorry, you probably did the math yourself. Never mind. Yes. Yeah. Do you went into DM mode for a second? <laughs> no, no problem. Uh, Orson, do you recall what you were told about these pickled punks? So I have a so I have a blue, an orange, a purple, and a red punk. Um, but they never told me what these were. He just decided that he was going to buy them because they were useful, but, um, no other, um, no yeah. other notes. I just needed to know the, uh, color. That's fine. Um, yeah. so Ashwin, you're pretty sure one of them is a potion of he heroism. Um, and then the other two you were unsure about, of course, if you spent like, 30 minutes with your alchemy supplies uh, looking at them, you could probably determine what they are. Of course, these snails are slowly making their way towards you guys um, during this whole thing. Uh, but yeah, so that's what you know uh, so far. Oh. I mean, one's for heroism, which is cool. Um, I would need more time to figure out which each of them does, unless you just want to waste them willy-nilly. <clears throat> well, sounds like we go in it the old-fashioned way. <laughs> yeah, I mean... We're, we're going to do the attack again. <laughs> well, now that I know there's a reason for it, and I pull yeah. out my flail. The, uh, the shells are very, very useful. Um, as you can, as like I said before, the pretty powerful magic, magic-y shells. And that's and, not, yeah, that's not, all of you magic users are like, that makes sense. That was the weirdest thing I've ever seen a spell do when it was deflected. Um, yeah. So, uh, let me put this paper away. We were, we pardon me, Ashwin? We can get a quick buck if we don't know what to do with it later. We can always just sell them. Yeah, it's Sounds like a plan to me if we can figure a way to carry him out of here. 
Well, we can we can figure that out after. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Ashwin, so... We'll say... We'll just say you have your action still to use, despite uh, all of this conversation that was happening between everyone. Uh, what would you like to do? Um... So I'm going to retake out the sword. <laughs> <laughs> Re-say it's barbecue time. It's barbecue time. Barbecue time! <laughs> oh, that's cool. uh, you kind of see, like, she gets this gleam in her in her mouse eyes that she's ready to attack, and she's super excited because she has a new sword, and she just charges at the snail, um... Which one, the right or the left? The left. Okay. Um. Do your did I, worst. Am I, am I close enough, or do I just yeah. charge and like? You're fine. You can make okay. it. Okay. All right. So then I'm gonna slash at the the head of the snail. Okay. Uh, just the head in general, or the. Kind of like like the neck. Look, it, it's not really a neck on a snail, you but sure? that part. Okay. Uh, roll for your attack. Yay. 21. 21. That will hit. Sweet. All right. And because I have it on fire, I do extra damage. Heck yeah. So, oh boy. So I also have a skill where I could re-roll one of my yeah my bad rolls. So I'm gonna do that cool. real quick. That was not any better, but all right. So, so I rolled a uh, sixteen. Is y yeah. Four damage. Uh, you slice off one of these, uh, one of these flail type things. Orson, when you pulled out your flail, you realized, oh, these look strikingly similar. Um, and, uh, <laughs> 16 damage. Math, 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 math. Got it. That's how I do math, by the way. I just say math, 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 math. Uh, That's an awesome superpower. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a superpower? That's kind of shitty. Uh, it's a shitty superpower. superpower. Uh, Ashwin, is there anything else? Uh, because I'm here and I can, I guess I'm going to do an action surge. Heck yeah. And do it all again. <laughs> Smash. Be back in two seconds. Yep. Uh, I believe this one's also a 21. Yep. So, ooh, I like that number. <laughs> Perfect. I got a 5 and a 6, and that's both plus 6, so that's 11 plus 12. Holy shnikes. Um, 20. Math, 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 math. You slice off three of these tentacles on this thing. And it is not looking good. And it's starting to retract into its shell. Is there anything else you'd like to do? Um, I think I used up all of my actions. Okay. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, we'll move on. And um, I think now is a good time to take a break because I have to use the restroom. Sound good? Mm-hmm. Five or yep. ten or? Sure. Perfect. All right, we'll be back in. Okay, okay, we're back. Uh, it is the flail's turn, um, and wrong page, Jake. Get your s together. The one that Ashwin, you just saw Ashwin do what she seems to always do, and just turn into a. Now it's a fiery ball of fury. Um, and slice off four of the one of these things uh, tentacle uh, head things. Uh, 
and it starts to retract and its shell starts kind of glowing and then changing colors slowly blinking and it speeds up more and more and goes whoop 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 whoop, whoop and starts shedding a pretty large amount of light, bright light within a 30 foot area and dim light 30 feet past that. And those of you who are within 30 feet, I'll let you uh, deal with that. Um, those of you, oh, did I just lose? Can you guys still hear me? Yep. Okay, yeah. yep. thank God. Mm -hmm. um, those of you within 30 feet, make a wisdom save. How close did they get to us when we were talking? I mean, uh, they were 20 feet out, and then you guys left, right? You guys bounced. Yeah. So. So it's just Ashwin. She's the only one who's had a chance to pretty run much. Back up to him. Uh, pretty okay. much. Uh, Ashwin. So I got a 19. Nice. All right. The light is stupidly bright. You 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 are definitely blinded for a second. But you shake it off, and you find you felt your brain starting to get a little uh, foggy. Uh, maybe this reminds you of a time when you were a teenage mouse, and you experimented with some of that uh, fermented uh, berry <laughs> mash, and you had a little bit too much. But you shake it off, and um, you're fine. But it is still doing this flashing, beautiful bright lights, Maybe just shielding your eyes a little bit. That's that's Snail's turn. Boop, 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 boop. And the other Snail, uh, since you're the closest to Ashwin, it is going to make flail tentacle attacks on you. Unfortunately. Yay. That's going to be a... 10 and a 7 for the first two flail tentacles. Jesus Christ. Oh, there we go. Uh, 11 for the third. And 23 for the fourth. I assume the, that way, that's not, the 23 hits. Yeah, so just one of them. Uh, you just... Yeah. This thing had these flail tentacles coming out of its head. And it just, in rhythm, just kind of sweeps down... Uh, at you, and only one of them hits, uh, and that's going to be... I think it's the first time I'm taking damage. <laughs> it's going to mm -hmm. be nine bludgeoning damage from this gooey... Yay. It hurts like hell because it's spiked on the end, um, but uh, it's not, not a death-dealing blow by any means. And... Yep, that's that guy's turn. Back to the top, Iris is... Did you and her move at all, or did you move, Dave? We came back to that. Yeah, so I... And then, uh... Didn't you guys move again, or no? No. Okay. No. All right, so she's, she's gonna make it this time without... She's gonna throw her same daggers, and now all of you are seeing her. It's like, um... Through her satin gloves there uh seem to be illusions or something you're not quite sure what but she reaches down kind of in a pretty disgusting almost like she's dislocating her wrists um but she reaches down and grabs these blades and they're when she grabs them uh they come out as just double-sided blades and she flings them she's extremely practiced at this super quick and she rolled a... Yeah, she hits on one again, and that's going to be another... Okay. 11 damage. Math, 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 math. And one of the daggers just goes straight through one of the tentacles that just attacked... Ashwin, and um, that is her turn. And when the rest of you saw now what uh, Prati saw was that when she throws them and one of them missed and one of them hit, they don't stick in their what they hit or missed. They just blink back to her. 
And... Just like any old human. <laughs> Crispy. You're a bird who does magic. Why is this so weird? Because <laughs> so, you guys claim that this person is alive. Those are two different things. <laughs> I, I would... I don't know. I I don't think she's a person. <laughs> I don't I don't know what we're talking about. So you've said we have something to kill and I run. So is the is the one that's retracted like is there anything non shell exposed? Um you can see at the bottom there is, but it's definitely for all intents and purposes, mechanics wise, it's gonna be harder to hit. Part so, of the head. Gotcha. Um, I'm still going to take a thwack at it with my flail. Handle it. So disadvantages, I assume? No. Or just be an it. AC change. Gotcha. That probably won't do it then. Uh, so that would be a 15? Nope. Nope. Crack! Right against the shell. Um, then I spin step, twirl around to the other one, um, and I try to punch. Then I just start wailing on that one. Okay. Um, so second attack, 14. No, it doesn't. You punch and you hit this very hard shell. Super beautiful, though. Um, especially since uh, the other one, you're, you're, uh, you're hitting the one that's blinking, correct? With the pretty lights and stuff? The first one. Yeah, that, that... was the blinking one. The second attack was the other one. Okay. Um... Yeah, you're fine. I just wanted to check if you needed to make a saving throw for the same uh, thing. Uh, yes, your your hand hits the other one's shell and misses. So is there anything else? Yep, I'm going to hit it two more times with a flurry of blows. Do it. Try to, at least. Man, my rolls are crap. Uh, so that's a little better. 16? Uh, yes, that does hit. Woo! Um, and this one, my, my fist gets coated in white energy as I hit it harder. Heck yeah. Um, that's some Spend sort of anime, time. probably. Exactly. Um, so that is... 12 points of bludgeoning damage. Cool. Let me mark off my key for that. You just punched one of these Spend things, blood. flails, tentacle head things off with your fury. That Punch. I did. Um, and I'm going to... Uh, Hell with that one. Also, do a stunning strike. Okay, and that's so a... a. I'm trying to find it because I can't remember. I think it's a Constitution save. Ooh. Con save versus fourteen. Well, I rolled a three. It's very good at Constitution, but it's not that good. So this thing stops. It's stunned. Moving. Um. Stunned till the end of my next turn, and I have one more. My flurry of blows now at advantage because it's stunned. Yep. Good thing too, otherwise it's been bad. Uh, mod twenty. Yep. Which I believe does hit for another ten points of damage. And you punch a, another one of this thing's tentacles off. Is that it? Yeah, and I just say. It's done now. Finish it off, Ashwin. And Nihilus. Um, okay, so they both have exposed tentacle thingies, right? No, one of them retracted the one that's blinking that Ashwin just went to town on. Uh, retracted okay. and um, is now lighting up like something at an EDM festival. Uh, but the other one has is out, so and it's stunned. It's done, so it's not going to do anything to us. Um, hmm. The other one, I mean, there's not really anything I can do. Uh, what do you mean? Well, because if the other one's retracted, and one of them is done, the other one's retracted, I only have magic. <laughs> there's not really anything that I can do. Um, Are you trying to do damage? Well, yeah, to, like, help out the situation, right? Yeah, you can attack the stunned one. Why can't you attack it? Oh, I don't know. I figured it was just incapacitated or something. Um, okay, then I guess I will go ahead and do that. 
Okay, and you have advantage on any attack rolls? Okay, um... I guess I'm going to just do my magic missile on it, so I don't really need to roll anything. Okay. Um, and I will go ahead and do a... Uh, a level one magic missile, so I'll roll three d4s. Okay. Uh, 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 so that, and it's a plus one, so that's three, eight... 12 damage. Nice. And your magic missiles, what's your focus again? Your your arcane focus? My crystal. It's around your neck? Mm-hmm. So, as you've seen a couple times, Nihilus grabs his crystal. What color is your crystal? I don't know if I've ever said, yep. but it's like a, just like a whitish clear cool. type of thing. Uh, grabs the crystal and you see a little light um, emanating from between his fingers. Um, and these, you did it at the first, first level, correct? Yes. Three bolts hit and it's 12 damage. Yep. Total. And these things hit another one of the, uh, tentacles and it has no more tentacles and it starts to retract and you hear a really high pitched kind of like scream, maybe, maybe a high pitched whistle. It doesn't affect you guys mechanically, but it's a horrible noise to hear. It's just like a... I can't believe I did that. Uh, <laughs> um, that was a terrible noise. Yeah, you did a great job. Thank you. <laughs> I'm good at whistling sometimes. Uh, all right. So it's still alive? It's very injured. Uh... It's looking like it's dying, but yes, it's okay. still alive. Um, as a bonus action, I'm going to cast Spiritual Weapon. Okay. Smash. What's and your Spiritual so, Weapon again? Uh, it's it's a Triton. A Trident? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and that is a attack or save or for me? It's nothing. I just cast it. Oh, okay. You can't attack with it on the first? I can't attack yet, yeah. Okay. All right. Orson. Okay, uh, it's about to be dead, but I hold my action reasons. Okay, fair enough. So, uh, for any, like, trigger? Like, what's the okay. trigger for your, uh, for your action? Like, you can't just... I... Oh, I guess, like, in this case, I guess I would be passing, because there's nothing I can do, and I need to save my okay. slots for something after this event. Fair enough. Uh... We're back to Ashwin. Um, Go nuts. Yeah, yeah, I'm about to just unleash the uh, fire sword. Ashwin's fury. On which one first? The one that's retracted blinking or the screaming one? The screaming one. Oh, okay. And got... Oh, I hate math. <laughs> So this is <laughs> Keep in mind it's advantage. This is advantage. So roll twice. Oh, okay. Oh, it almost was a 20. Um, Those are the worst. So the, first, the first one I got a, a 21, and then this one I got a 15. Okay. The second one I got a 15. Um, yes, the, uh, first one hits. Yay. I'm sure you're gonna kill it. I mean... Probably, but... So, 10, and... 19. 19 damage. Murder kill it. Uh... You shove your scimitar into the gooiness of this retracting snail, and uh, it stops moving. And kind of the 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 snail body, the gooey snail body that was once lifting up this shell, once you stab it, it kind of lowers to the ground, almost to the point where the shell is sitting on the ground, um, and that leaves one left. 
which um, we'll just say uh, Iris murder kills. And now you have two uh, flail snails with beautiful shells dead and in front of you. Yay! All right, well, now we uh, got these shells. Question, does anybody have any rope? I do. Uh, I believe I do as well. Good. Then I got a solution if you want to transport these things whole. Oh, what's your solution? Uh, I can make oxen appear and have them yoke to tow it. Just appear? I, well, yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a farmer. I'm a farmer and a warlock. My only concern is we're in a forest. Uh, how well will they be able to get around? Will they be able to... to to cart something around through a forest? Well, I imagine if you just tied these things to the oxen, then you would have, then I can tell them, go in this direction because <laughs> I can talk to the oxen. All right. Well, I'm, I'm all for giving it a whirl. Okay. Keeping it intact seems like a good idea for keeping its value. All right. So uh, Orson casts... Um, he casts a uh, flock of familiars. Okay. Um, I choose. I can have up to three familiars. So I'm gonna. So I'm gonna cast um, three oxen because it'll just be faster, at least in his head. Um, mm -hmm. Then we tie the ropes around where we need to around the oxen and around the shells, and hopefully we will be able to move that all to a place the duration is an hour so we have an hour to go in a direction okay um what is the cr rating of the familiars you can cast or conjure and then what is an oxen's cr rating um let's see so um it does not actually have um a cr rating um according to this spell it just says you some you temporarily summon three familiars spirits that take animal forms of your choice. Um, each familiar uses the same rules and options familiar conjured by the find familiar spell. So I guess I have to look at the find familiar spell, and if it has a CR rating there, then that's I think that's where it would be. Let's see if I can find the find familiar spell. So it's only giving you a select few familiars. Um, you gain the service of a familiar. So it's saying you choose out of this list because it has oh. a colon. Um, oh, okay. All right. I did not see that there was a list according to this thing. Yeah. So At least according to the Beyond. Yeah. It's bat, cat, crab, frog, hawk, lizard. Um, unless you have, uh, yeah. are you packed of the chain? I am packed of the blade. Okay. Because then you can, your fine familiar is beefed up. What's an ox and CR rating, though? If that's, do you know what that is? Mm -mm, not off the top of my head. All right. I'm going to try to see if I can find it. I found a homebrew one, and it was one that's a home. Say it again, Brian. I found a homebrew one, and it was one, but it was a homebrew one, so I'm seeing if there's anything. You broke up, like, on the same word twice. One quarter is what I found. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, it wasn't an official creature. What if what if I cast Guardian of Faith and had this huge thing just carry our shells for us? <laughs> Whoa. You mean... Uh, I'd have to look that spell up as well. Um, because I believe... Well, it's a large spectral guardian. Right. Uh... You know what? Uh, we'll just say, yes, it works since it's one f quarter. Um, mm -hmm. But you have an hour. Um, and... So you're just going to have them follow you with the snails, or what? 
I'm so if so I guess how far are we from the nearest village or do we have to go back you'd have to go back um there's she, Iris when you ask Iris she says uh there's we there's Priets which is north but where that's the closest thing to a village and you've is Priets even there? I heard that it was attacked by that same thing that jumped out of the ground and ate one of the Strani Acting Company beholders. Oh, yeah, that city's not doing so great. Well, is there a possibility we might find people who buy this because it's this going to be valuable? And if people are dying, maybe that they're buying? Uh, Priets had the one person, which. Uh, um, it had Ag Agatha. Um, I think we need a plan to carry these around for the long haul, not just yes. That's short. That's more. What if we buried them here and then just like pick them up on the way back? <laughs> or we could just break them up. Yeah, yeah. Not, at, like a spell to restore things. Right. Well, I don't have anything like that. Like a oh. mend or something. Yeah, because then we could break them up and then fix it later. Well, it's either leave them here or break them up is what it sounded like to me. So I say we give it a let breaking them up. Okay. We're strong here. I don't think I'll have very much luck breaking this thing. <laughs> Proddy, Proddy, what are you doing during this whole thing? You're muted. I'm just uh, licking my wounds. So you healed yourself? No, I haven't. I haven't uh, healed myself yet. Okay. Well, if you want to, go ahead and heal yourself. Or if you just okay, I, I use one of my um, uh, let's see where it is. Cure wounds or? No, it's not cure wounds. It's like healing light. So I get eight of them. It's uh, under my bonus actions. Sure. So, yeah, so I'll just use one of those guys. It's a it's a D8. Okay. Um, so you guys want to start breaking up these shells? Uh, oh, oh, wait, wait, wait well, a minute. I, I might have an idea. Okay. But it, it's very... Well, these are shells, right? Mm -hmm. So can we turn them upside down and turn them into kind of like sleds? <laughs> and then... <laughs> And then if they're somewhere downhill, then we will race them downhill <laughs> in shells. That, w that might work on your way back, but as I described earlier, it, before you, once you saw the shells, the slope had started inclining. Um, so... Oh, well, it was worth a try. Okay, I think we should start breaking them up. Okay. So, hold, hold on. What, Prada, are you hurt? You, you didn't come anywhere <laughs> close to those things. He, I'm sorry, what? He tried to attack me, Iris says to you guys. Again? Oh, jeez. Uh, that's, that's not completely true. I tried to turn her into a cockroach. Attack what? me. You wanted a cockroach pet? Yeah, what What? What was the thinking there? What were you going to do? It was... Pretty attacky to me. I mean, you, you That's don't pretty really attack. attacky to you? Oh, man. You, you, you cast hmm. spells. That's kind of what you do. <laughs> I just wanted to turn her into a cockroach. To <laughs> Nihilus what? shrugs and goes, that's Prodi. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is, if you tried to I turn... I want to give, uh, give Nihilus uh, inspiration <laughs> for that. Congratulations, <laughs> Nihilus. You have it for about four more minutes <laughs> because it expires. <laughs> you can't, you can use it the next, next episode. <laughs> no, it, you, player inspiration expires. DM inspiration uh, does not. I thought it was like I thought it lasted. Like I attack an hour Iris. And... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh man. Is that? I'm kidding. I okay. Iris, <laughs> more human than human. Oh, listen, I guess we just can't leave you alone until you figure this out. We'll get you your rod, Prada. You just gotta. Patience. It's not going anywhere. It's standing right next to us. No, yeah, that's priority number one for me is to try to uh, do some research and figure out how to replace that, that thing in here. 
That's a great plan. That's what we should do next. You, I like that, that one. Is that your new priority? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had no idea how I had no idea how powerful she was, so now I'm not, not going to try to attack her anymore. Uh, yeah, so she has since put away her ickle was back into their quarterstaff form, put it strapped it back to her back, um, and she is staring at Prati with just like, I'm not going to keep my I'm not going to take my eyes off of him type of look. Uh, and, uh, she says to you, Prati, you don't even have the second piece of the rod. Ooh. Ashwin has it. Yeah, well, you know what? I just have one face. <laughs> I'm not I even actually, offended. Actually, um, arguably, you have a different face now than when I met you. So you <laughs> Son, you look at me, you have another different face. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. And that's a good place to end it. We'll we'll um have we'll start next episode with you guys having either succeeded or fit, failed on your breaking up of the shell and you will continue your journey uh to the modeled mirror which is hopefully where you find these creatures that Iris has described to you these uh Minor. beings um and uh, yeah, let's go around and plug whatever you want to plug uh, that's coming up for you. Let's start with you, Ryan. All right. So on March 12th day at 8 p.m. Pacific, I have a new show that is coming up called Blank Slate. It will be a live stream LARP murder mystery. And uh, the big key is that the chat will determine who did it, why they lost their memory, and all the players start off with amnesia. So it'll Ooh. be a fun time. Um, click four episodes on Scabby Rooster. Cool. Uh, on twitch.tv. I will tune in to try and help determine those things. Uh, Yay. Richard. Hi, I'm Richard. Uh, you can follow me everywhere uh, at Let Richard C. I have two podcasts interview with a nerd, which I had Ryan on. I finally posted the episode, so it's out there for your yes. ears. Thank um, you. And then I have Awkward he Thank you. Awkward Human Survival Guide, uh, which is you know out there as well. And uh, that's it. Lex. Hi, guys. I'm Lex. You can find me on Instagram at it's period underscore period Lex or on Twitter at it be Lex. You can also find me on Savvy Rooster on Twitch. On Wednesday nights, we play a Starfinder game called The Drift Runners. And cool. we're in a lot of trouble right now. I got to catch up on that because I do want to watch a Starfinder um, game played. Uh, Prodi slash Dave. Um, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram at DRod3. So, yeah, check it out. Perfect. Just me doing. I'll just be doing human things, you know. Just <laughs> I love whatever counts for being human these days. I I love, and it's not completely uh, random that Prodi is searching for rods, and uh, the rods intersect with his character name and his Twitter uh, handle as well. Um, Brian. Hey, I'm Brian. You can't find me or follow me anywhere, and that's how I like it. Uh, I just am here to play D and D. You just love D and D. I, I just love, love D and D. It's just I, so much fun. I lo I love finishing the show with you saying you can't find me anywhere. Uh, I'm Jake Friday. You can find me on uh, Twitter at Jake Friday or on Instagram at Jake Friday. Stay tuned for episode 25 next week. I don't, I don't know why my voice turned into 25 next week. Um, <laughs> but we will be back next week, that is for sure. Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific. Be good to yourself and be good to others. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great week.